Wonderful. Okay. Uh, welcome um, to a, a sunny, hot Tuesday afternoon at two o'clock um, that anybody watching the video may not even remember. Um, being uh, uh, here in, in uh, June to talk about peer assessment with peer grade. Um, just a quick mention that this uh, session is being recorded uh, and all of the resources for this session will be available online on our website as well as the recordings uh, for this session. Um, my name is Adam Finkelstein. I'm Associate Director for Learning Environments here at Teaching and Learning Services and happy to uh, bring you through uh, a short webinar we have today talking about peer assessment and the tool that we have at McGill, or at least one of the tools we have at McGill, um, to support peer assessment in your classes. Um, so again, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to fire them off in the chat. Uh, thankfully, uh, uh, Teddy Quintoro and, and uh, Barbara Stetcheson are helping out as co-hosts to answer any questions as they come up in the chat. I'll keep an eye on it as best uh, as I can. Uh, and uh, uh, we will also have, I'm sure, plenty of time uh, for questions uh, at the end of this session. Okay, so let's get started. Um, the learning outcomes for this session are, are relatively clear. There are three things uh, that we really want to talk about. The first is really defining peer assessment and kind of why we would want to bother with peer assessment. Um, the second is really thinking about what are all the parts of peer assessment we need to know about and what are some of the benefits and drawbacks of, of peer assessment. And the last is to, to recognize how peer grade, um, a tool that we have at McGill that you can uh, uh, sign up to use, uh, can be used for peer assessment to really make things a lot simpler uh, for you to manage the entire process. And we'll talk a lot more about that uh, uh, in a few minutes. So, one thing I want to start with is kind of uh, the end, and it's always really helpful to start with the end of people who've successfully implemented peer assessment and have some interesting things to say. Um, so Barry Eidlin, who teaches a sociological inquiry course in the Faculty of Arts, has been using peer assessment successfully for a couple of different terms. And I want to highlight a, a one part of this that's really important um, that, he, uh, that he talked about. And then what he talked about here is that um, you know, hear that, that students don't immediately see anything connecting the two between sort of the highly polished end result and their own starting point that they're struggling through. And one of the nice things about peer assessment that I think is a really important part of why peer assessment is helpful and effective is that it really focuses on the process and allows you to, to not only focus on the product being important as an end result, but also thinking about the stages that you have in that process and how critical that is. And if you recall the previous webinars, we talked a lot about multi-stage assignments and how breaking up those assignments are so important to scaffold students through the process um, so that they really become parts of the discipline uh, that you want them to. It, this peer assessment can be a really useful component. So having done this a number of different uh, uh, terms in terms of his uh, own students writing, I wanted to start with an example that we have lots of examples at McGill uh, of people using peer assessment effectively. So that's just one that we wanted to start with, thinking about a process. So our website on a peer assessment at McGill here that you have, see in the top bar that uh, Barbara and Teddy will paste into the chat is a phenomenal resource on assessment and peer assessment, okay? And what's really interesting here is that it really talks about two different kinds of peer assessment, and I wanna mention what we're gonna talk about today. So there's really two different types of peer assessment. The first is peer assessment of students' assignments. In other words, peer assessments of student evaluating each other's work, okay? The second type of peer assessment that we can think about is peer assessment of contributions to teamwork. So this is like, how did everybody contribute to working on a team together? Now today, we're only going to talk about the first. In other words, we're only gonna talk about peer assessment of other students' assignments. We're not talking about evaluating group work. That's something different and something we'll deal with at a later date. Uh, if you're interested, please let us know. We'd be happy to follow up with you about some strategies for that. Of course, you can always go to this website and look and do a deep dive on the resource documents and examples of, of both of these. But we're gonna to focus today on peer assessment of other students' assignments. And the resource document that's here on the left has a well Wealth of information, uh, uh, some of which I'm going to talk about today, but is really worth a read if you want to get into a, a bit more detail about benefits, drawbacks, what the research is talking about, even more examples, and the assignment examples on here, there are tons of them. Um, so I really would suggest that uh, more information, that's really the place to, to go. So now that we know we're talking about peer assessment of other student, of students' work, let's talk about what peer assessment uh, is all about. Generally, the idea of peer assessment is what it sounds like. It's peers doing assessment. So the idea is that students are providing feedback on other students' work, okay? 
Now it could involve you, doesn't necessarily, but the idea is that the primary focus of our discussion is peers evaluating each other, okay? And there are some really interesting pieces to that. And some of the pieces to that are that it really supports the idea of critical reflection. Um, students are able to think about what they've written or what they've done or what they've filmed or what they've designed um, and think back as to, you know, what are some of the good things? What are some of the bad things? Where do they need to improve and, and, and push that reflection process? There's an opportunity, of course, for constructive feedback, and we always want to make sure it's constructive feedback, not just feedback, i.e. great job, but something where there's meaningful, actionable items that students could do to improve with feedback. And, and then, of course, the idea, which is great about peer assessment, is it gives more perspectives than just your own. So instead of you being the only one doing the assessment of student work, you've now distributed it out to, to everybody in the class so that they are actually involved in that process. And what's interesting is that students are getting perspectives beyond your own and looking at what their peers have to say. And there's a lot of questions that come out of that that we're going to address in a second. How does peer assessment work? And I'm thinking about this in terms of what a, what a student might see, but kind of the overall structure of peer assessment. Almost all peer assessment follow these kind of four areas or four steps. The first is students hand in their work, okay? Somehow it's distributed, and then they give anonymous feedback to a bunch of other work, students' work that they get. Then the third part is the students, they give feedback on the feedback they've received. So for example, they might be actually giving feedback on three different assignments. And then the people who actually have those assignments are gonna say, here's what I thought was great about what you gave me for feedback. And here's some of the things that I didn't understand or that need clarification. And then the last part is the teacher gets an overview as a possibility of the whole process and then figures out you know, what the uh, 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 marks that might be for that particular session. So that's kind of like the big overall structure of a, of a basic core of what peer assessment is designed for. Students hand in work, they give anonymous feedback to X number of other students at work. Then they give feedback on the feedback. And then there's a whole summary and brought together at the end where the teacher gets an overview of everything that was done. Okay. What's really important on this process is thinking that there are a couple of key things. Um, we, we know right away that, well, students have to buy into the process. We have to actually buy in. Uh, they have to buy into the idea that actually doing this is helpful. Um, and that, you know, there, you, could, you could see some other sort of places that might be problematic of receiving feedback. You know, not everybody likes to get feedback. Um, and not only that, but when you give feedback, you have to be careful how you give that feedback so that it's actually very effective and gives you something actionable and constructive. So let's look at an example. I'm going to go to um, a, uh, a peer assessment uh, blog post that was done uh, that Jenny Ferris from TLS did as an interview with Claire Trottier, uh, who's uh, taught an intro microbiology course. Um, and um, I think we'll put the, the link in the chat for this one as well. In fact, actually, there's an entire series on peer assessment that involve interviews, examples, et cetera, on our blog um, that you can follow up on. But what's really interesting about this, this example, and one of the reasons why I wanted to bring up this example was twofold. One is that it's a 300 person class. This is not peer assessment in a 20 person class. This is peer assessment in three, with 300 students, okay? The second thing is that it's a type of activity. What, what uh, Dr. Trottier wanted to do was really get students to think about how do you make science relatable to people that might be reading it or translate it into something that, that uh, can be read by somebody who isn't at, had the sci or doesn't have the scientific knowledge that, that they might. And so what was really important is to be able to go through that process and break it up into stages of having a draft, getting feedback on that draft, and then moving it forward. And before peer assessment, Dr. Trottier was trying to do this all on her own. Now you can imagine 300 students handing in drafts, giving feedbacks, doing another round, and then maybe actually handing in the assignment. It's an overload. And it's one of the primary problems um, with instructors selecting assessments that require a lot of back and forth and a lot of effort is that it's very hard to scale them. Um, it's very hard to do in-depth grading uh, and in-depth feedback for 300 people. But peer assessment has an interesting twist. So what was done here, and I want to give you a little bit more specifics, is if we look at the assignment task, I just want to show you um, that what happened in this situation is that Dr. Trottier looked at giving different percentages for um, the draft and the revision, okay? So of the assignment, the draft was 40%, the revision or round two was 60%, okay? But what's interesting is that how it was broken up within the draft. So in the draft, 65% was actually writing the article and 35% was reviewing 
peers writing. So the peer review part was really critical because um, what was interesting around what Dr. Trottier wanted to do was really make this as authentic as possible, is that one of the things that's important in science is peer review. You're going to need to review your peers' work, you're going to need to be able to give feedback, and you're going to need to be able to take that feedback from your peers. So I just wanted to show you a, a really concrete example um, where she set up both the round one draft, the percentage of the assignment, percentage of the total grade, and the same thing again for the revision here. What's really interesting is that over a period of two years, she actually did this with her students. So talking to her students about, well, what percentage is better to have as a review versus the, um, the actual writing of the newspaper article? What's really interesting is that the students from, I think, 2017 to 2018 wanted the percentage of the reviewer's writing. So the percentage for reviewing peers' writing part, it was actually smaller than 35. They wanted it higher. They wanted it to be worth more um, than, uh, than they did the previous year. And so I thought that was an interesting twist to it. Again, an extremely positive experience with 300 students doing this. Uh, and what's really important at the end of the day is absolutely exceptional results uh, from the students and, and uh, in their work. So let's talk a little bit more about the benefits and challenges of peer assessment before we get to, to uh, uh, how we might be able to implement that. One of the things, key things here is that the benefits for students are, there are a couple of key ones. One is that it supports critical reflection, okay? Um, you've got to have that option where students are able to actually look at the work, be able to look at ideally with something that is a rubric or a standard that you're going to have, and be able to critically reflect on what did they do right, what did they do not do right, etc. And in addition, it also supports reflection because now they're getting evaluated by other people um, and they're getting feedback back on that. So that's really the second part, which is they receive much more feedback. Think about them giving the feedback straight to you and you are the only one grading or a TA is the only one grading. They're only getting feedback from one person. In the situation like Dr. Trottier was talking about, they're actually getting feedback from four people. They're getting three students that are giving feedback and the instructor getting feedback. So they're actually getting far more feedback than they ever have before on, on, their, uh, on their, uh, um, their assignments. The third, learning to give constructive feedback, a key benefit to students about how to give good feedback, how to give it appropriately. And of course, students need guidance in all of this. And this is something where, you know, starting at the beginning of the assignment, you're going to want to have students go through practice runs and make sure that they're able to give that feedback constructively and be able to uh, uh, move forward on, on the uh, uh, process of the assessment. The third is, of course, developing assessment skills that are, that are part of that. And last, of course, to reflect on and adopt discipline-specific practices. So again, peer review and peer assessment is an extremely important part of academic writing. And this is something that you can model and do within your own classroom. Benefits for instructors. Well, one of the key benefits for instructors is that you get students to focus on the process, okay? Not just the product. In other words, not cramming at the very end, doing their final draft and handing it in as the end result, but really breaking it up. And it's the same argument that we talked about in previous webinars about, you know, doing multi-stage assignments, about breaking it up into pieces. So focusing on process and doing authentic work because focusing on process means that you have to get feedback and you have to go through a process that you're most likely going to do if you're going to do any further academic work. Second is gaining insights into misconceptions. And that's really an interesting part is that you can see where students are going wrong very early in the process while they're giving feedback to each other. Third is providing students diverse feedback, like what we said in the students. And the last is reducing workload. And what's really interesting is that I wanna put a star, it's not necessarily reducing workload, okay? So that's one of the things that's key. It doesn't necessarily reduce the overall workload. It spreads it out in a different way. It also makes it that you are not the only one evaluating 300 assignments. It's now spread out among a lot of other people. But at the same time, you have to actually structure everything as well. So there's a lot more prep work that you do in advance to get this set up, um, but, it, but the actual grading you do is actually less. So it's kind of a little bit of balance there. And, and that's something that's really important to think through is that you do have to look at the workload and make sure you make choices that are appropriate. Now, let's talk about challenges because there are challenges. One is that students need guidance to do this, okay? Just dropping peer assessment into your course without giving them context, uh, the ability to practice, et cetera, is a guaranteed problem waiting to happen. You, do, you wanna make sure students have proper guidance and they're really clear moving forward. The second thing is that students may be very, very, very uh, uneasy with assessing their peers. And this is really important where they need practice on this is that students are not used to giving each other good constructive feedback. And that's something that they have to get practice to do. And this is an opportunity to do that. They may be a little uneasy and a lot of them are, but keeping that rationale of why you're doing that and moving it through can be really helpful. 
The third is you need buy-in on the feedback. I mean, if everybody basically bails and says, ah, good job, and nobody really cares, well, that's a bit of a problem. So you do need buy-in, and you need to expose to students why this is such a good idea. They may have had a past negative experience with peer assessment. This is something to keep in mind. It's not always implemented well. Um, and of course, the last one is, is potentially time consuming. One assignment could be spread over three months, um, but it could be sort of this peak, sort of the pinnacle assignment, that if you actually spread it out and spread out your assessment into, into chunks and pieces, you're actually going to get to a better end result. But it is potentially time consuming. And the last one is many, both instructors and students, are unaware of the level of work involved. Doing multiple drafts of anything is more than just handing in a final product. It's going to be better but it's gonna be more. And that's something that's really important to, to think through. So let's talk about using peer grade. So if we think peer assessment's a good idea, what can peer grade do to help us out? <clears throat> let's get into the meat of that. There's really five different areas I wanna focus on um, of why peer grade is helpful and what it's really gonna to do to move you forward. Because if you think about all the things we just talked about peer assessment, what's very clear is that this is not easy to do. Um, there's a lot of steps involved. And if I don't have some kind of software to help me out, how am I going to keep track of this? How am I going to figure out who's assessing whom and who's anonymous and getting stuff to people? All the logistics become very, very difficult. So the first ones are, are types of assignments you can use, the feedback that's possible, the review process itself. Talk a little bit more about the settings and language that you can do in peer grade and the weighting. So first one, type of assignments. What's great about peer grade is that you can use any type of student artifact, an essay outline, written report, reflections, oral presentation, videos, visuals. You can have people record a presentation and upload that and use that as what you're going to actually evaluate. So you're really not limited to the artifacts that are selected in terms of the type of assignment that you're using. Next, type of feedback. Oops, sorry, hold on a second. I I'm going to press the wrong button. So type of feedback. Next is type of feedback that we've got. There are basically three different types of feedback that you can do uh, within peer grade. The first is uh, guided or written feedback. And that's really, you know, open section by section about you give questions and students write in the feedback that they need to, to, to write in for uh, the evaluations that they're doing. The second is a scale where you're actually giving a lower or higher scale and, and, and justifications along that as an example. And then the last is a really a yes, no checklist that's kind of much more basic. So it's sort of advanced down to basic in terms of the types of feedback. And you might also customize this. So you might have, let's say, well, if you're just handing in something uh, like, uh, did you do it or did you not, a yes, no checklist might be okay. Um, you might also then have a scale for another part of it. And then, then you might have written feedback for a third part. Again, all of these examples are gonna be on our TLS website. You can look at lots of different types of assignments and how you would use those assignments um, in, uh, in your course that, that you can connect to. Um, so the next part here is the review process. So let's look a little bit of the review process. And, and Julia asked, is the anonymity important? So the anonymity is a really interesting question. And I think that's a, that's a, that's a very good question. It, it is and it isn't. So in other words, anonymity is extremely helpful um, uh, to be able to ensure that students feel like, like they're not going to get judged by their peers and they can be a little bit more free in some of the comments they're doing. However, some of the research around the anonymity has found that actually not being anonymous gets better feedback. So it's kind of something you'll have to look at and you'll have to make that call as you're deciding what you're going to do in your review. Generally, the research is talking that three to four types of reviews are really the, the sort of the number that you want to aim at, three to four reviews for any particular uh, um, ass assignment that you're using. Again, here we have uh, uh, the number of views that you can customize with peer grade. The anonymity, again, you can allow students to see who they're evaluating or allow the students to see if they've who they've received feedback from. That's something that you can decide. Um, you can randomize it, uh, which is really also important. So everybody just gets spread out and you get reviewed randomly by three people. If you have anonymous checked by you, three people you don't know necessarily. Um, there's of course an opportunity for self-evaluation, which is really critical too. So you can reflect yourself on that process in your own assignment. Um, and of course, the last part, which I wanted to mention here, which is getting feedback on the feedback, it's called a back evaluation. Um, and that's another really important part of that review process um, that you have an option uh, uh, to enable as well with peer grade. The next thing that's important to think about is timing and language. Peer grade talks about two types of submissions, one being live and one being homework. Live is basically a fixed in time. We've talked about fixed flexible strategies, if you remember. Live is really a fixed in time event. Um, it could be, for example, if you're evaluating a, a presentation that's live in Zoom, mostly used for in-class kind of stuff. So if you're doing an in-class presentation or in-class work, you can use a peer grade as a, as a submission for a, for a live uh, assignment. 
But in our situation now with remote teaching, most of it is probably going to be homework, which is basically here's an assignment, go off and do it. And there are stages and timings related to everything. You must have your assignment done by here and submitted. Then you get your feedback done by here. And then you get your back evaluation done by here. And then it closes by here. The other part that's really interesting is language categories for review. So you can actually self uh, um, identify that you can review more than just uh, English assignments. So those of you that are teaching a bilingual class or letting students submit in French, you can actually have people say, yeah, yeah I could do a, a French or English uh, feedback, or I can just do an English feedback. So you can actually kind of clump people in two groups when you're doing that, that random uh, uh, evaluations as well. And the last thing I want to mention here is weighting and grading. So when it comes to weighting and grading, the, the, the grading that you have are the submission performance and the feedback performance. And you can weight that how you feel appropriate in terms of the, the questions that you've got. In addition, there's that, that feedback score. Now, one of the limitations that we have in, in peer grade is that the back evaluation, the feedback on the feedback, isn't scorable and doesn't work into the calculation of the grade. It's a limitation in the software that we have, the peer grade, but there's kind of ways around this that you can, you can do. And one of the ways you can get around this is by actually in your rubric for the evaluation, include something that says, I have actually incorporated uh, that back evaluation in my, in my thinking and here is my reflection. So you can work it in if you really need to as well. Um, and then of course is the idea of resubmission uh, of the assignment after review. So you get the review and then you have the opportunity to resubmit if you wanna do that, if you wanna have the, those stages. So that's really the peer grade in a nutshell, uh, in pieces. And you know, if we put it all together, what you got are, are a system that allows you to do all of the management of this entire process, start to finish. And peer grade is really good about guiding you through those steps one by one to get you to the end result. So if we wanna think of our key takeaways of our whole session uh, today, as we get towards the end here, um, the first is we know that peer assessment can increase critical thinking, reflection, provide more feedback and better feedback and result in higher quality of student work. So that's one thing that we need to think about as, as being a real interesting possibility. The second thing is that it does require careful planning. You need to think it through and make sure that everything is planned out the way you wanna do that. And the third part is that peer grade can manage this whole process and make peer assessment much, much, much easier to, to do and much easier to implement. In fact, when you look at what peer grade is doing or any of these software that are supporting peer assessment, in most situations, you just wouldn't be able to do peer assessment, period, if you didn't have some kind of software that was managing this whole process, because it's a huge amount of logistical work. But one thing that's really great about, about the takeaways from peer assessment is that you don't have to do this with everything, of course. What you wanna do is think about, well, what parts of my multi-stage assignment, remember our last webinar, what parts of our multi-stage assignment could I incorporate a peer assessment part? Maybe it's a draft, maybe it's an outline, something along those lines. And it'd be really, really great because you're, again, getting that different types of assessments in for students. You know, you can implement with a tool that's really easy to get going. Um, and so it's something that you can really broaden out the types of assessments you do with your students um, to really get at that higher level thinking, higher level assessments, um, and better reflection and feedback. So with that, I'd like to end our webinar from here. Um, and I wanted to, to make sure that there are a lot of resources that you can go to from here. And it's very clear that our website has got lots of that stuff. Um, we're also going to link to on our recordings page for this webinar, uh, some of the key uh, follow-ups for peer grade. Uh, one of the things for, for uh, follow-ups with peer grade that you're going to want to think about is in order to use peer grade, you have to actually ask to have it enabled. Okay, this is an important part. It's not on by default. You're not going to find it in my courses. Reason being is we we have limited licenses. It's not open for the entire university. It's really for people who want to use it. So if you do want to use the peer grade as an example, send an email to it support at mcgill.ca and it will come to us and we'll be able to, to uh, connect with you, enable it in your course uh, and allow you to move forward with using peer assessment. So that's something you, you'll want to do as a next step. In addition, uh, if you don't know, um, have a look at some of the tools in my courses in our My Courses Essentials. And again, we point out that, you know, we have at least 67. This was 67 when we did the shots, but I've shown the screenshot a couple of times in webinars. So there's a lot more uh, uh, options uh, uh, for review there. And in addition, questions and answers that you can have there. You can always email IT support at mcgill.ca and it will get to us, uh, as well as doing any consultations from there on. 
Um, again, we have lots of other webinar sessions. This is our peer assessment with peer grade one. Uh, we're, this is our kind of our last day to do our webinars for this week. We will resume back after uh, July 2nd uh, with some more of these webinars as we get into July. And of course, all the recordings are available for you to go watch and all of the sessions are available with the details and resources from there. So with that, I'd like to say, what else do you want to know? I'm going to open up this chat a little bit longer. I've been keeping an eye on it, but uh, wanted to open it up uh, to see if there's anything that I might have uh, uh, missed. And uh, we'll take some questions uh, for the last uh, uh, five uh, minutes or more here. Okay, so let's look what we've got here. Adam, may I interject? Absolutely, Carolyn. Okay, so um, I wanted to add two points. One, you talked about peer assessment, you talked about peer evaluation, you talked about peer feedback, and I think you're using the terms more or less interchangeably, but I did want to highlight something about this. Nowhere are we suggesting that students actually assign each other a grade. So we would recommend staying away from that. Adam talked a lot about um, constructive feedback. That's a really good thing for students to do, but it's probably not such a good idea in any case to have students assign grades, actual grades yeah. to each other's work, but certainly comments would be good. So That's that was one point. point. And the other point I wanted to make is that it's really important when you're, at, when you're setting up the assignments that you ask students to comment on things that they are actually able to comment on. So the kind of feedback that an instructor gives is likely going to, or is able, able to provide is likely going to be different from what the peers can provide. So Absolutely. it can be helpful to ask the peers to respond as readers of the work and not as teachers or instructors or professors. And often students, you had mentioned the the point about buy-in, right, Adam? And yep. to get students to buy in, they have to believe that they can really contribute. Yep. And by getting them to focus on features of the assignment that they are well positioned to comment on will help with getting their buy-in. Yeah, absolutely. No, those are really critical. And, and thank you for, for uh, adding that further clarification is that, yes, we know we do want to avoid having students sort of grading each other, but the feedback, it's really interesting is when you take things like the grade out of that, the feedback can be really uh, rich, uh, really deep, and actually in some cases can be, be really, really helpful. In many cases be very, very helpful, of course, uh, for students to be able to improve. And, and absolutely, I think your second point, uh, critical. Uh, to making sure that that students have that opportunity. And, and I think one of the things we can't stress enough is the idea of practice, is getting students to practice this. And one of the things that's really helpful, and, and uh, Dr. Trache did this in her, her setup, is actually involve the students in the creation of the peer assessment assignment. And it's a really nice thing to be able to do um, to, uh, to get students to be involved in the process, take ownership of that process, and feel that, that they can benefit from it. And you're right, that absolutely, the students are not going to give the same feedback the instructor would. And, I, and you know what's really interesting, and I've seen a couple of uh, these peer assessment tools bouncing around Facebook and other words, and, and you know, they're, they're, kind of, they're kind of advertising these, these tools as, hey, instructors, you never have to do assessment again. You just dump it all on the students. And it's really, it's a really, it gives a very, very bad taste the way that they're advertising these kind of, uh, of tools. And, and I think we want to make sure we're, we're not talking about that. We're really staying away from the idea that it's not that the students are replacing you. Um, what the students are doing is doing different types and spreading out that kind of feedback. And what it's going to end up doing is getting final assignments that are much better if you do it in stages. Um, okay, so let's look at uh, if there are any other questions about uh, integrating grading of the feedback into a mark for a particular assignment. So I, I think that, you know, the grading of the feedback is part of the process for peer grade. Um, but if you're talking about the back evaluation, the back evaluation in peer grade, as I mentioned, is not necessarily part of the grade, but you can actually create your own rubric in the system and then be able to actually uh, use that as part, uh, as an example. Um, uh, for example, like, did you actually read the back evaluation? Um, did you actually, you know, comment on the back evaluation? Did you put it as part of your reflection? You can make that part of the assignment itself. Um, okay, so uh, there's one question here that came to me privately that no one would probably see is that, are there any resources that help give guidance to feedback to give to students? Um, I'm going to say yes, absolutely. In the resource documents that we link to, there's a great deal of information on, on things that you can provide to students. And I wanted to, to also suggest that practice. Practice is really important and doing something that might be a low stakes practice for peer assessment, um, like say maybe it's an outline or maybe it's an idea, maybe it's just a one sentence idea that you're going to get some feedback on, just doing that practice can be really, really, really helpful. 
Okay. Uh, I'm looking at uh, any others here. I've got a bunch of things. It looks like a lot of them have been addressed. Uh, Barbara, Teddy, are there any of that I should talk about or mention uh, that have gone by that you haven't been able to get to? Let's see here. Um, yeah, so, so Cicely's asking about a, a dedicated workshop on peer assessment for group, group work. Um, we do not have a webinar planned for that at the moment. Um, if you are interested, let us know. We will uh, provide you with some resources about how you could do that. Um, we, uh, uh, like I said, we don't have a, a specific tool for that per se, but we have some options that can help you out. Um, okay, so in, uh, Catherine said, in terms of oral presentations, how would peer grade be used? Um, yeah, so, so one of the things about oral presentations is obviously you'd have to record them. Um, so that people can watch them. Or I guess if you did them live in a, in a Zoom session, you could have people kind of remember what was done. But I would say that it would be a lot better if you recorded uh, uh, presentations and then uh, uploaded them as, uh, to peer grade as an example and use that as part of the evaluation. Um, so the, you, you, can, you can have the entire class give uh, feedback on oral presentations, but I'm not sure I would necessarily use peer grade for that. So what I would say, Catherine, is that if you've got some specific cases, come speak with us or, or email uh, IT support and it'll get up to us uh, and we can help you out work through that specific thing that's, uh, that's there. Um, so again, Heather uh, uh, asked about uh, peer evaluation of group work. If you go back to the website on, uh, on peer uh, assessment, there's a video of uh, evaluating group work that's really great that uh, Carolyn just posted there. There's also another, there's resource documents. So there is a lot of information that's on the web. We just don't have a webinar on it at the moment, but there is a lot of web uh, information on the web that is already available for you. And yes, thanks, Teddy, for, for putting that uh, link to the, uh, the website that's there. Okay, so are there any other questions that we can address? Uh, uh, please post them before we uh, wrap up our session for today. The video, by the way, is great. Uh, you'll recognize Carolyn's voice in the video. Uh, uh, and it's, uh, it's a really well done overview of uh, peer assessment of teamwork and, and worth watching, absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah, Angela, absolutely. I mean, the biggest bonus of peer assessment is it, it really brings students into the discipline, especially uh, if, they're, if you're talking about academic writing where they have to be able to give good feedback to other people and other people being their peers, and they have to be able to receive feedback from their peers. Um, and there's uh, something really powerful when you change an assignment from you as the instructor being the only one to see it to suddenly tons of people in the class seeing what everybody else is doing. And it, that exposure in peer assessment is really Really, really interesting to see and a lot of people that have done peer assessment when they were you know questioning about what what would happen have really expressed that how you know in, in incredible the results have been um, and and the, keeping in mind there are pitfalls you got to make sure it's planned out very very carefully but um, how incredible that the, that can be uh, to to um, really getting at high level student learning even in 300, 400 uh, uh, person classes. So Claire, Dr. Trottier's one is 300. We have examples of 400 or more that have actually done uh, peer assessment with peer grade uh, um, with, uh, um, I would not say without any incident, but with, with very, very few uh, hiccups. And, it, and it's really been a great uh, tool that helps you scale that up uh, to a large class. Uh, Selena talks about journal submissions as a way to do peer assessment. Absolutely. I mean, this is ideal for journal submissions, journal articles, um, the idea of, of translating scientific work, all that stuff. Uh, yes, yeah, Lawrence Chen in engineering, at five, about, I think he has 400 to 500 students uh, and has been using peer assessment for a very long time. Um, and I would say go look at those uh, examples and on the blog posts, all of those interviews with people that have done peer assessment, it's, uh, it's amazing. There's a lot of really great detail in there uh, for you to be able to, uh, uh, to move, uh, move forward on. Okay, so any last questions? I notice everybody's still sticking around. So if there are any further questions, uh, uh, send them up now. Otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll start to wrap things up. Yeah, thanks, Teddy. That's the peer assessment blog series um, with all the different cases that, uh, that you can review. Well, that's great. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, uh, thanks for coming to our, our, what is our first webinar on peer assessment and peer grade. We're going to do a couple more of these. Uh, there's at least uh, two more of them um, in uh, early July, along with the rest of them. 
again, it's been a pleasure. Thank all of you for coming. Thanks very much to Barbara and Teddy uh, and Carolyn for uh, helping out with some feedback and, and great resources and great moderating. Um, I wish you all the best and uh, have a great holiday tomorrow and enjoy. Thanks a lot.